What's up guys? It's a little windy today, so I apologize in advance if the wind affects the audio at all. So I get a lot of questions on Facebook and Instagram about roll pans and my hidden hitch in this truck right here. So I'm gonna go over that a little bit today for you guys, just so you can kind of see. I've done about three or four of these, and each one you kind of learn a little bit along the way, so hopefully this can uh, streamline your process if you're gonna put a roll pan. It's from 03 to 09, third gen Cummins, or, or actually third gen Ram, I should say. The gassers have the same exact thing. So uh, the roll pan that I always use is from LMC. I'm sure you can get it other places as well. Uh, it's just a $120 steel roll pan. But first, I want to say thank you guys for the support thus far. I appreciate everyone subscribing and liking the videos. I always appreciate the comments. Also, if you guys have video ideas for me that you would like to see, that's something I might be able to help you out with, just comment down below, and I'd be glad to uh, do some videos for stuff that might help you guys out. So this is the underneath of my 2005. Obviously you can see that there's no hidden hitch built into this truck. I, I never tow with this truck so I wasn't really worried about making a hitch for this truck. So the biggest hurdle that you're gonna have to do to put one of these roll pans in and which deters a lot of people is you're gonna have to take your factory hitch completely off. It bolts right here, there's one two and then there's three holes right here. So you undo those three bolts, but the problem is this part of your bed, you can't really see it real well, but there's a shelf right here uh, that your bed is in the way. So what you're gonna have to do is actually unbolt your bed. You don't actually have to take the bed completely off, but you need to unbolt your bed so you can actually lift the back of the bed up because what the stock hitch does is kind of fits into this little cutout right here so once those bolts are out it slides completely out but it won't slide out until you take your bed and lift it up maybe six or so inches so there's eight bed bolts four on each side one is right through here and it goes right there the second one is uh, right here where there's a cutout hole right here and then there's two up further uh, which are actually built into bed supports. They're real easy to find. So uh, I believe short beds and long beds both have eight bolts if I'm not mistaken. So once you do that, you can pretty much just jack the back of the bed up and slide your factory hitch completely out. Your factory hitch kind of curves down. So that's why your factory hitch needs to come out because the roll pan literally won't even attempt to fit with your factory hitch in. So that's step one. So I should also mention you do have another option to not completely removing your bed if you're worried about the bed bolts or taking the bed off in any way or lifting it up and you don't really want to deal with that and you get your bumper off and you're like, I don't really want to mess with that, I'm never really going to put a hitch in it. Or if you just want to come back and do it later, what we did on my brother's white truck, we were kind of in a little bit of a hurry. Uh, some people will call it a little bit of a half-ass way to do it. You know, but it is what it is if you're in a hurry, you don't want to deal with it, uh, and you're never going to put a hitch in, or like I said, you're going to come back and do it later. This is also another option you can kind of see where the hitch kind of comes down here. You could literally just take a sawzall and cut both ends of the hoop part down, and that will gain you, like I said here, that will gain you enough clearance to put that roll pan in. So pro tip that I can offer you guys as well, when they ship these roll pans, you can kind of see, I have the camera down low so you can actually see the bolt holes where they want you to attach the roll pan to your truck bed. <clears throat> you can see the silver bolts. There's, you know, trying to see here, do it with my finger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do not believe they drill a hole in this location and possibly not that location. I could be wrong about that one. That one might be there, but definitely not this one. You can kind of see the cutout for the spare tire. I would recommend drilling this hole. So there's a metal flap kind of rides up that that extra hole will just look a crap ton better if it's done and bolted in there. Otherwise, it, and it kind of looks a little crappy in my opinion. Also, you're gonna want to test fit this before you paint it and drill this extra hole. And there's also holes 
see you doing my finger again, over here and over here where the roll pan attaches to the side of the bed, you're gonna wanna do those before you paint it just because nobody wants to drill holes in a nicely painted roll pan. So my recommendation is to drill this hole and drill the side holes and test fit it before you even get it painted. That way you're not worried about messing up your brand new paint. This is kind of a close up for that side bolt that I was telling you guys about. It's basically just drilled right here in the corner and the nut you can fish through right from this pocket right here. So usually you mark, drill a hole in your roll pan. I think it's about an inch and a half up. You can kind of see actually there's a hole right here where I drilled it too low and then it doesn't hit this spot right here. So it's about two inches up, which will get you into this flat part of the body that you can't see from the exterior. Drill that hole in the roll pan and then mark it with a marker while you're test fitting it where to drill through your body and then you can bolt it right from inside there and reach the bolt from the backside. Here's just an outside view for you guys where I have the receivers pretty much almost dead nuts right in the middle. Another question is your license plate light on your factory bumper. You're just gonna take one of those wires and then splice into the two wire light that comes with the kit. So really you just have to put some uh, spade connectors on there and plug that right into your factory license plate plug. Also another question that I get all the time is when I have my license here, how do I get that out? How do I tow? And I've said it before, I really never really pull bumper pull trailers. The hit the, the trailer I use every day is a gooseneck, so that's what I use primarily. So if I did have to pull a bumper trailer, what I do is I take my license plate off and I have magnets that I put on the neck of the trailer. What most people do and what's most common is they make a flip down receiver kit that has hinges that bolt right here so the license plate swings up and you can slide your hitch right in there and then bolt it up and the license plate kind of just rides flat my truck has a backup camera as you can see in this picture that's why i left it on there and it's wired so i cannot physically you can kind of see here see the clearance that plate cannot rotate up because it hits the top of this so i can't use a flip up plate that's why i don't do that option but if you don't have a backup camera on your truck then you can certainly do that and you don't need to worry about taking your plate on and off it doesn't really bother me because i don't really use the hitch a whole lot but i didn't want to not have one on the truck to use if necessary so this is a basic underneath shot of what the hitch looks like Sorry, the truck is not the cleanest underneath here. This is not my show truck, so it does need to be cleaned up a little bit, but I wanted to get this video up before Christmas. So the main construction right here, there's a plate on each end connected to this box tubing. And then there's also a plate that sandwiches on the outside of the frame. So what I did is these are 3 16 thickness plates that are cut into six inches by seven inches long. I made four of those. And then what I did once the hitch was out, there's, you could see in the other truck, the empty holes. So I drew an outline and made four plates with holes in the factory location and then sandwiched on the outside and put one on the inside and then the inside one is what the main i believe this is actually three by three so i use three by three and you can see that the three by three you could actually go a little bit bigger but there's no real need the three by three connects easily within those three bolts so that's welded butt welded to those end plates and then for the actually actual receiver hitch you guys can go pick up a receiver hitch pretty much anywhere tractor supply then that is connected to the three by three now to get the proper spacing for that hole 
up and down wise, I needed to space that about an inch down to get the proper height. So there is this th one inch thick solid plate that's welded to the three by three, then welded to the receiver to get the proper height for this hole. And then also what I did is I ran a gusset right up here to connect everything again. So this is actually the same design that I used on my sled pulling truck as well with the welded plates on the side and then that main 3x3 or 4x4 crossbar. That's the same design I used on my sled pulling hitch. So as far as strength and like class and weight ratings and everything goes, I don't think you could have more weight pulling against a hitch than a sled pulling truck. So I'm not too concerned with the weight rating and class if that's something that you're asking yourself. If, uh, I don't know if that looks like it's going to hold up to a lot of tongue weight or some heavy trailer loads that you guys might be towing. I never had a problem with strength. If I did, I would have never built this one the same exact way. So that shouldn't be a concern for you guys if you're going to build it the same exact way as this one. These bolts are three quarter inch bolts. They're five inches long. And then I used washers and lock nuts on the outside. And you can see this is just a shot of the outside plate. The only thing that I had to do with these plates to clearance them, they pretty much six by seven will fit except for this top angle right here. I basically just had to nip off the top corner there because the bed See where the bed support kind of comes down? You just have to nip that corner off so you can clearance that. So just like anything else, there's plenty of ways to do this differently and still get the hitch receiver in the same spot. The only downside to this style hitch that I built is I can't fit. I, well, it might fit. I never even really tried actually to put back up. You can see my spare tire is not in there right now. It, it's going to be close if it all fits. That's the only downside that it, the spare tire might not fit with this style straight bar location because I'm pretty sure the tire kind of comes right where that 3x3 three three bar is. That's just another angle for you guys to see. Like I said before, there's probably another way to do this, other ways to do it. This is just how I did it. It's very simple. For square plates, a three by three, a receiver, something to drop this down, and a welder. This, in material wise, this really probably shouldn't cost you any more than, I would say maybe a hundred, 150 on the, maybe even on the high end. A lot of people probably have this stuff laying around. There is a company out there that makes a drop-in hitch but it's also $350, $400. And like I said, most of you guys wanna make this stuff yourself. Most of you have it laying around. So why not just make it yourself? It's really not that hard. And like I said, even if you had to go buy the material, maybe, maybe $100. So I hope that helped answer some of your questions and helped out some way, shape or form in the installation of the roll pan or the hitch. As always guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. Like I said earlier, if you have any ideas for videos, just put them down below if it's something that I might be able to help out with in a video. Coming up, I am headed back to Chris's to get his truck ready for the ultimate call out challenge in April. So if you haven't seen the first video, it's down below. So I'm gonna be out there for a pretty good solid week helping him after Christmas. So look forward to seeing that. As always, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the like button. We'll see you on the next one.